This morning, we welcome a special guest with us today. Uh, Paula Kerman uh, will speak to us in a moment. Paula is a writer, an editor, a photographer. In fact, the list of things she, did, she does is quite long. She's a filmmaker, she's a blogger, she's a communications consultant, she's a website designer, she's a musician, she's an activist. <laughs> she's well known for her activism uh, in many social justice circles in the city of Edmonton and beyond. Paula has received a number of awards, including a True Friend of Macaulay Award from Macaulay Revitalization and the city of Edmonton for her work as editor of Boyle and Macaulay News as well as a number of revitalization-supported projects, such as a series of booklets about the area of Macaulay and a short film, Macaulay Moments. Her blog, RadicalCitizenMedia.com, has been shortlisted for an Edmonton New Media Award in the category of Best in Political or Current Affairs. She's been a recipient of the Salvos Prin Lorenzo's Peace Award from Project Plowshares for her work documenting Edmonton's peace and activist community through photography and video, as well as getting the community online and connected with social media. In 2014, she received the Daughter of the Year Award from the Daughter's Day Initiative for being a role model for women in activism. Paula has just recently released Macaulay, A Caring Community, Conversations on Social Housing, which is a short film exploring issues of housing and homelessness in the Macaulay neighborhood. <clears throat> and she was one of the organizers of the Women's March on Washington, held at the Alberta Legislature grounds just a couple weeks ago. We're delighted to hear from Paula this morning, some of her reflections on her action and activism, on her participation in the Women's March, and to share some of her reflections with us today. Paula, we welcome you. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, know, I, know, I know some of you here, uh, some of you might also be familiar with me as the, the face behind the emails of the Moving Forward Reconciliation email list that I operate for Edmonton Presbytery. Um, and thank you very much for asking me to speak this morning. In September of 2005, I showed up to my first peace march, and I happened to have a camera with me, and I asked the organizers if it would be okay to take some photos. They said yes. I posted the photos that evening on some website space I happened to have, and announced that I had done so on an email list serve. Some of the younger people here might not remember what one of those are. They do still exist. <laughs> The response was so great that the website crashed. And it was at that moment I realized the importance of documenting the activist and social justice movement in Edmonton, not only for historical purposes, but as a way of communicating messages of peace, environmental stewardship, gender equality, LGBTQ rights, indigenous issues, and so on. I also became involved with a few groups as an organizer, such as the Edmonton Coalition Against Foreign Racism, and so did double duty at events on photos and videos, as well as sometimes being a musician or MC. Now, flash forward to November of 2016. I heard about a women's march on Washington that was to happen the day after Trump's inauguration. The friend who told me about it asked if something similar would happen in Edmonton, since after all, I'm quite connected to the activist community. So my inquiries online led me to a national organizing group that was overseeing the creation of what were called sister marches in cities throughout the country. And I signed up to help with organizing in Edmonton. I was put in touch with two other women who had expressed similar interests, and in fact, Allison Post, who's one of my co-organizers, is here with me today. Everyone say hi to Allison. Hi. <laughs> and together we organized one of the biggest rallies held in Edmonton in recent history. There were reports. <laughs> How many of you were there? A few. There were reports of 4,000, maybe more people crowded on the north side of the Alberta legislature on January 21st, 2017. The experience was exhilarating for me. The energy was palpable. 
And even though I'd never addressed a crowd that large before, any nervous feelings just slipped away when I got to the microphone. It was definitely a day I will never forget. What was my motivation for getting involved with the Women's March in the first place? Well, it's similar to that which motivates me to be involved in social justice in general. From a faith perspective, I was raised in a Jewish household. And while I am not religiously observant in a traditional sense, save for some of the dietary laws, there are some aspects of Jewish culture and philosophy that continue to shape my life. There is a Jewish value called Tikkun Olam, which means healing or repairing the world. And this has been a guiding force for me in activism. More specifically, I view the need for a women's march in Edmonton in a very local context. I have been appalled by the messages of hate and violence directed towards women politicians in this province. I recoil in horror at stories of Islamophobia directed at women who wear hijab. In our world today, building love and hope and cooperation between people of all faiths and cultures and genders is more important than ever. That being said, we, the organizers, work very hard to make the Edmonton Sister March less about Trump himself and more about the need for a society with civil discourse, where people can disagree without resorting to hate speech, and where there is equity for all people. What was so heartening about the event was seeing so many men and boys there, standing in solidarity with their partners, daughters, sisters, and mothers. The question, of course, which of course followed the march was, where do we go from here? I and one of the other organizers, Allison, decided to keep the momentum going by building a Facebook page as an offshoot of our main event page, using it to promote local women's initiatives and related events and for any future events we may organize. The reaction was strong and within a few days we had over 700 likes and as of this morning we're about close to 1,000. When people ask what is the lasting effect of something like the Women's March, <coughs> I point out that the simple fact so many people responded to the event and turned up is proof in itself that more and more people are not going to be complacent, that they want a world where gender-based violence, racism, and hatred of all kinds are not acceptable. I have been involved in activism and attending protests and rallies for over a decade now. The main comment I get from naysayers is that protesting has no effect, is no lasting result. And from all early indications, when it comes to the Women's <coughs> March, this is simply not true. Also, protest, in quotation marks, does not necessarily mean standing in the street with a placard. It can mean taking action by writing letters, making phone calls, and being active online and promoting the kind of social justice and change you want to see in the world. If we want a world with gender equality or any other form of social justice, we have to be willing to make a stand and put ourselves out there in whatever way seems appropriate. Recent events in the world continue to demonstrate why we needed to march. To summarize and to elaborate on a meme I saw recently on Facebook, is that sometimes we look back at history and we think, what, what would we have done had we been there? But we're here now, and whatever we're doing at this point in history is what we're doing because we are present. Don't wait until you're looking back and wondering what you could have done. We all have a choice to be active citizens now. Thank you very much.